Hi, this is PDF Bergzerg Arcade at bergzergarcade.com and this is tutorial 161 or part 3 of the changing room. Uh, let's go ahead and open up Unity. And in this one here I want to start setting up some prefabs for the weapons that we're going to be using. So no longer are we going to have our meshes uh, attached to our player and just activating them and deactivating them. Now we're actually going to instantiate them in the position that we want as well as attach the icon to the actual uh, the weapon script itself so we no longer have to keep that in our resources folder uh, we can just get it right from the script so let's go ahead and start creating some prefabs so I'm gonna start off I'll open up prefabs I'm gonna come down make a folder for weapons and I probably already have here we go so I've made a folder called weapons and this is where I want to store all of my my prefabs now so I'm going to come up and actually grab a few weapons here. Uh, let me see. We'll shrink that down. We'll go to objects. And I'm going to start off. I believe it was Axe 3 was a Salifi. Uh, yeah, it looks that way. So that's the model I'm using for my Salifi. So I'm just going to go and drag that onto my scene. I'm going to grab my Morningstar and my sword as well. So I'll put that on the scene and then my sword and I believe I was using sword one uh, one-handed O1 and yep looks looks like it so where I'm gonna drag that on to to make my three prefabs for the weapons I've been using so far and I'll just shrink down my art assets folder come back down to my weapons folder and I'm gonna create a prefab and I'm just gonna copy it three times or I guess two times There we go. And the first one, I'm just going to call Morningstar. Now, the benefit of doing it this way is that we can actually start templating out weapons. And you can also, uh, with a little bit of editing, expose some variables in your script and actually make uh, unique weapons. So if you have some sort of quest that uh, requires a certain item to have you know, exact stats and you want to have it placed maybe on the ground at the end of some dungeon, uh, this will start leading in that direction. So I'm just going to quickly make these prefabs. There we go. So I'm just going to grab the first one and I'm going to add my weapon script. Now I don't believe we've actually added a, a uh, menu option for it yet. So let's go ahead and do that. I'll open up my scripts and it should be in items and we'll go to the weapon script. Uh, it's not, I believe originally it's from Mono Develop, so we should be able to attach it. Uh, let's just find out. So add component menu and helps if I spell it right. I'm actually going to shut down teleport before it crashes my system. There we go. That's the great thing about Mono Develop. If you have a typo, the colors won't be right. And the path I want. So hack and slash item weapon. That's where I'm going to store it in the menu. I've actually never tried it with something that wasn't automatically inherited from Mono Develop. I don't see a reason why it wouldn't work. All right, so I'm probably going to need to add some using statements here. And I'm going to try the uh, Unity engine. And let's take a look, see if it's there. So we'll take a look and uh, let me see, it's not showing up. So let's open up the base class, which was item. And it's not deriving from model behavior, and I think it has to. So let's just try that out. Model behavior, I'll save that off again. Pull we'll head back into Unity. Let it recompile everything. And we'll check. 
Uh, sometimes it takes a bit. Uh, it's down here. I forgot to add the tutorial to the end. I uh, don't think I missed that last time, but we'll just add the tutorial here. I'm going to save that off. Let everything recompile. Take another look here. It's still at the bottom. So it takes a little bit to update. And item is showing up there. I'm just going to quickly take this back out. And let it recompile. I'll test. And we'll take a look. And it's not there. So apparently it actually has to derive from mono behavior to get up there. And that makes sense because it has to be a mono behavior to actually add it to an item. And since components are things you put on game objects, it should be derived from there. All right. So now if we actually pick something, and this is Axe 3, and I'm just going to change the name just so I know. It doesn't really matter because once we get the script attached and set up, we're going to delete it. But if we try to add it, it's probably not, well, it'll probably add, but uh, we're probably going to get a few funky warnings. Uh, because we're overriding, well, we're, actually, no, we're not. What's happening is here is we're calling item. Now, this is our default constructor before. And the way we were doing it is we're creating, you know, new items. And you can't actually use new with model behavior. So I'm going to switch. Actually, there's no switch really needed right now. What we're going to do is just add the awake function. And in that awake function, I'm going to call the default constructor, which is item. And we're going to have to go through the whole hierarchy of uh, items and change a few things around because now they're going to be mono behaviors. Uh, basically, we want to make sure that at least this default constructor is called uh, when the item is first made so we can fill some of these out. And oops, I'm going to switch this to a public. Uh, so we can actually drag an icon on here. Uh, you can actually, if you really want it, I'm going to make this public, actually, now that I think of it. If you really wanted, you could probably go ahead and uh, set all of these to public if you wanted to edit them in the inspector itself. And we probably will a little bit later on when we start creating unique items, or at least items that you want to have sort of uh, static stats. And I'm still going to leave the accessors in here for now because we might want to access them through script and uh, I just like having them instead of always accessing the variable directly. Uh, but for now, we're just going to leave it like that. I'm going to save it off. I'm going to come back into Unity. And I'm going to make sure it's added. Don't lose my prefab, that's fine. I've got my weapon script. And let me take a look here. All right, so we can't. We're going to need a void down here. And there's probably going to be one more. We'll want a void down here as well. And we can't call this item anymore. What we're going to call it is item setup. Or item init. Actually, it's just, well, yeah, because we have two of them, because we do have the overloaded one. I am just going to switch them to init. If I only had the one item one, I would just use one init. Ah, never mind. Too much cough, sir. I'm just going to call it init. And this will just be an overloaded init. Now, a little bit of object-oriented history here. We have two functions called the same, but notice that the parameters that come in are different. And I'm not going to get into the whole uh, function signature and everything else, but think of it this way. Uh, the difference between these two is what's passed in. So if we call init on this class and we pass in nothing, this one's automatically going to be used. But if we pass in, or if we call init, and we end up passing in a string, an int, I uh, should change value here. But we'll do that in a bit. Uh, so if we pass in a string, 
an int, a rarity type, another int, and another int, this one's going to be made. And let's say we even had a third one, and it just took a string. So I'll just quickly put that down. So I'm going to go public void init. And let's say this one just took a string. And, you know, it, it does whatever with that string. It really doesn't matter. Uh, we, we end up with three functions called the same. But if I call call the one that passes in a string, this one will automatically be called. And it's not really ignoring these two. It just it doesn't use those two. And if that's not quite clear and you want to learn a little bit more about it, uh, just take a look in some sort of object-oriented book or website and look up uh, function signatures or functional overriding. But let's just save that off. I'm going to come back in Unity and we'll just take a look here. Actually, now that I don't have a function called item, I have to change this to init. And remember, you wanted to see the errors. <laughs> okay, let me just quickly check these ones. I've got quite a few apparently now. So uh, the new keyword is being used here and the mono behavior. And for some reason, when I'm double clicking, it's not opening. Uh, let me just take a look at the next one. Uh, it's just a variable that we're not using. That's a script that I'm using somewhere else. And that's for stitch. Just let me quickly close down mono. Oh, we'll just get back to that. Uh, I might have to close down mono be or mono develop and restart it, but let's just go ahead and start with this. So I've I've got my script attached and uh, I exposed the rarity, which I didn't mean to. I wanted to expose the damage type. So let me put this back to private. What I actually meant to expose was damage type. There we go. Let it recompile and it should update over here. There we go. So I got the icon. Now I've gone ahead and moved all my icons. Well, actually, they're in a different project, but I do have icons in this one. Uh, let me shrink this down. Item icons. Now these icons aren't finished. I haven't actually done anything with them yet. Uh, if you notice, they're still set as textures. But I have gone ahead and started a little bit with them. I've renamed them. And I'm just going to start with this one here, the Sliffy. I'm going to select my Sliffy and I'm just going to drag it on there. And of course, I'll want to go through and style them up like I did in the last one, or the last tutorial I went through. And now I can actually set the damage type for this. And since it's an axe, I want it to be slashing. Uh, now, we can only set one damage type this way. And later on, when we start getting into uh, bitmasks, we can actually start setting up multiple damage types for a weapon, but for now we're just going to select one damage type per weapon. So my axe is going to be slash, and uh, let me see, what else are we going to have here? Well, the fork is obviously going to be piercing, hammer is going to be bludgeoning, then later on we'll probably get into some elemental ones. But I just want to hurry up and get one prefab done here, uh, just to show you the process of doing it. So I'm going to open up my prefab folders our folder and I'm just going to drag this on here so everything's set and we notice it's blue here and the box turned blue great I'll delete it I'm going to take the sword now and I'm going to rename it uh, and I'll add the component so we'll come down to hack slash tutorial item weapon I'm losing prefab that's fine uh, the icon for the sword I guess I might as well just leave this open and we'll come down to my sword, which is right here. I'll drag that on. And a sword can either be slashing or piercing. This is one of those items that could really benefit from having multiple damage types. Uh, for now, I'm just going to make it so slash. And I'll leave it there. And I'm actually going to just do my Morningstar while I have the icon folder open. And hack it slash, player, item, weapon. Losing prefab and Morningstar icon right here. And the Morningstar, it's again, it's bludgeoning and piercing, but I'm just going to leave it bludgeoning for now. And now the thing, I'm going to switch the sword over to piercing. I just have an example of each damage type for later on because I'm not sure if I'll actually get these other weapons up and running before we 
move further into the tutorial series, but I will have one of each at least. So now I'm going to shrink this down and I'm going to come to my prefabs, which are right here. I'll just drag the morning star onto the morning star. Notice I did not rename it, but it doesn't matter. I tend to rename them just because of, I don't know, OCD, anal tendencies, I don't know. So we'll delete them and we actually have three prefabs set up and we have not exposed a variable over here for weapons yet. Uh, and it looks like we're actually running out of time, so we'll, we'll do that in the next tutorial. And I'll see you then. Bye-bye.